The LA Kings played another solid game on this big five-game road trip, but again, failed to come away with two points. I'll tell you why this latest loss to the Devils hurts more than most. Plus, like it or not, there were some good things that happened in this game despite the result, including Andre Kopitar staying red hot and the Kings' penalty kill continuing to shine. We'll talk about all that and more on this edition of Locked on LA Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you are enjoying this content. My name is Eddie Garcia. I'm your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years and a passionate LA Kings fan. For the past 30 years, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. The LA Kings played game number two of their very challenging five-game road trip last night. All those games against teams currently holding down playoff spots and arguably their toughest test. It was in New Jersey last night against a very talented team um, in the Devils that is one of the best in the NHL. And I wondered if there would be some lineup changes for the game in New Jersey after a good performance, but not the desired result in the team's previous game against Minnesota. And it looked like Kings head coach Todd McClellan was going to opt to keep the lineup pretty much the same, but an injury forced him to change things up a bit. Trevor Moore was a late scratch with an upper body injury, and that had a domino effect on the lineup. Kevin Fiala was moved up to the second line. Gabe Velarde moved up to the third line, and Jarrett Anderson Dolan inserted into the lineup on the fourth line. I said I thought that we'd see Velarde move up uh, and and maybe more move down based on what I saw in the Minnesota game um, because I thought Trevor Moore just didn't look right since coming back from his injury. It may, I kind of attributed more to rust, but maybe there's actually a health issue. Uh, could or could not be related to the previous injury. But again, uh, Trevor Moore is currently back out of the lineup. But the LA Kings also on the back end, Alex Edler was given the night off and Tobias Bjornfoot was in the lineup on the defensive side of things on the third pairing. As for the start of the game uh, against the New Jersey Devils, a solid start by the Kings with two first-period goals to take a 2-0 lead. Andre Kopitar scored on a breakaway after a beautiful down-the-ice pass from Sean Dersey, scored on that Kopi can-opener move that we all know and love so much as he gets the goalie to move, open up his legs, then he slides the puck in between the legs from the five-hole there. Uh, the second line of Deno Fiala and Arvidsson also had a lot of energy in this one and several grade-A scoring chances. And after connect, failing to connect on a two-on-one just minutes before, uh, Kevin Fiala and Victor Arvidsson would come back on a second two-on-one in that first period. Um, this time it would be Kevin Fiala. Instead of trying to pass the puck over to Arvidsson, shooting the puck and a rebound goes right to Arvidsson who puts it in. And again, the Kings had a 2 nothing lead after one great start for LA. New Jersey would score the only goal of the second period after Sean Walker turned it over behind the Kings net to make it 2-1. In the third, the Devils tied it up after a Tobias Bjornfoot turn- turnover along the boards, and that made it 2-2. But with just 4-19 to go in regulation, Kevin Fiala got possession of the puck on a strong four check behind the New Jersey Devils net. He fed it over to the side of the net to Andre Kopitar. Victor Arvidsson skated through the slot to draw the attention of the Devils defenders, and Kopi feathered a pass right on the stick of defenseman Sean Durz, who jumped up in the play. He scored to give L.A. a 3-2 lead again with 4-19 to go in the game. Unfortunately for L.A., they were pretty much down a man the rest of the game. First off on a bad tripping call, Gabe Velarde uh, was sent to the box. The Kings would kill it off, but then New Jersey had the extra attacker pulling the goalie for the last couple of minutes. And with just 37 seconds to play, Devils superstar Jack Hughes passed the puck into the slot to Nico Heischer, their captain, who deflected the puck in the net, past Phoenix Copley. And we would go to overtime where Dawson Mercer of the Devils would score and the Kings lose 4-3. to three. So just on a personal note, uh, yesterday I was having a bit of a bad day. Uh, we had the Feedback Thursday podcast and the YouTube episodes both having technical glitches and both would not upload. 
in my frustration, I decided to walk away from the computer, watch the Kings game, and then go back and try and figure out what was going wrong afterwards. Well, needless to say, the result of the Kings game did not do much to improve my mood. As a matter of fact, I was pretty pissed off after this game. I don't feel great about admitting that. I'm a 53-year-old man, and this is what the 23-year-old Eddie used to do when his teams would lose, get grumpy and pissy after a hard loss. And I'm not saying that I'm ever happy or apathetic after the Kings lose, but this one stayed with me for a while uh, after that game for various reasons. And uh, I, I think a lot of it kind of came from the realization that really good teams in this league close out games like that. I'm not suggesting the Kings aren't a good team, but I think you know what I mean. If the Kings are the team that we all want them to be now, they have to close out games like that now. Now, if you would have told me before the game the Kings would go to overtime against a very good New Jersey team, end up getting a point, I probably would have thought, well, that's a pretty good result. And New Jersey is a very good team, uh, one of the best in the NHL. Now, they're a bit on the younger side. There are some other teams out there that probably are more Stanley Cup uh, ready, if you will. Um, but this is a very good young team. Maybe this is the type of team the Kings are maybe in the West. The Kings are a little bit more veteran. But New Jersey, a really good young team. I think a dark horse Stanley Cup contender this season, probably a little bit ahead of schedule. Like I said, they've got a lot of really young talent. Um, but but they're very good. Um, and they've been unbeatable, literally, against the Pacific Division this year. Now 14-0-1 after beating the Kings. They're very good on home ice. And they lead the NHL with 21 comeback wins. So maybe not a shock that they did come back and, and get this victory in a shootout. All that said... If the Kings are the team we want them to be, they have to close out games like this, period. Bottom line, you've got a lead with just over four minutes to go, and you've played a great game up to that point. Not a perfect game. Nobody plays a perfect game, but a really solid game on the road against a really good team. You've got to find a way to close that out, and they didn't. So the result is, and, and the reality is, even though they've got some nice wins this year to the Kings, um, this one would have been another one of those great wins that they really need kind of for their confidence to prove to themselves that they are an upper level team in the NHL. And when you let those leads slip away, and I know it's been an issue for the Kings of late letting leads slip away, then, you know, you, you aren't one of those elite teams in the league. And I think the reality is if we're honest with ourselves right now, losing games like that proves that the Kings are not where we wanted to be at this point. You have to close out wins like that when you've played so well against a good team I know but you just got to get it done and the Kings didn't and that's obviously uh, very disappointing uh, now I did something I usually don't do after this game and I'm going to tell you what that was and I'll also tell you why there were a lot of good things the Kings did in this one despite the disappointing result we're going to talk about that in a minute but first I need to let you know that this episode of Locked on LA Kings is brought to you by Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you've got to try a Built Bar. They are so delicious that you won't think you're eating something that's good for you. Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, and they come in unbelievable flavors like the new churro flavor, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how Built does it, but these are protein bars, but they taste like candy bars. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 17 grams of protein. Take one of these things when you need a little pickup and get you on the go before a workout, things like that. They're just what you need. And you don't have to wait to order a box online. You could do that if you want at built.com, but you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. They are in the pharmacy section. In addition, they are to the new flavors. They have the old standards as well, like cookies and cream, double chocolate, and coconut puffs. Built bars, protein bars that taste like candy bars. So, admittedly, I was a bit more emotional watching the Kings game than maybe I usually am. Uh, so, I did something I usually don't do. I went back and I rewatched the game this morning. Um, I didn't want my grumpy mood to taint what the Kings did or didn't do. Uh, I wanted to remove my emotions from what I was watching, knowing what was going to happen, and evaluate the team with an open mind. Uh, it was funny that my wife asked me, are you going to get in a bad mood again rewatching this? And I smiled and said, no. Uh, and the truth is, there were a lot of good things to take away from this Kings performance. They didn't play um, a bad game. They played the right way 
for the majority of this game. And again, not to say that there weren't mistakes. Of course there were, but there were a lot more good than bad. And I really saw that rewatching the game. Um, now, every point is precious right now for the Kings and teams in positions like the Kings are in a very, very tight division race. And we'll update you on that in a moment. Uh, so it was good to see him get a point. Um, but as far as some of the good things last night, uh, let's start off with the captain, Andre Kopitar, uh, leading this team of late. He has been playing some fantastic hockey, got the Kings off to a great start on the board with that beautiful breakaway goal. His 20th of the season, giving him 12 seasons of 20 or more goals. Uh, that's already one more than he had all of last season. He's currently riding a four-game goal-scoring streak. Also had that beautiful assist to Sean Dursey on that late goal that should have been the game-winning goal. But uh, great to see the captain, Andre Kopitar, uh, doing great things for the Kings of late. And hopefully, your captain leading you down the stretch and into the playoffs, that's something that you certainly want to have. And right now, Andre Kopitar is doing that. Speaking of Sean Dursey, who scored that goal from Andre Kopitar, I thought he had his best game of the season. Now, unfortunately, he was on the ice and in front of the net on the game-tying goal late, wasn't able to tie up the stick of Nico Heischer. Um, Again, they were, the Kings were down a man because of the extra attacker with the goal he pulled, but I thought Sean Dursey did a lot of really good things in this game, more on the offensive side than the defensive side because we know that he is an offensive defenseman. Uh, but that great stretch pass to Andre Kopitar where he scored the goal, obviously scoring the goal himself, but he had many um, opportunities in this game to set up his teammates into good scoring chances. And more often than not, he did that. He had some great passes, still played a pretty responsible game defensively, but I thought John Dursey made some really good decisions. You know, in the past, he's had some issues with some of his decision-making, but I thought he had a really, really strong game, did John Dursey. And again, hopefully we see more games like that from Sean uh, going forward. Uh, the Kings penalty kill was fantastic. Uh, the Kings killed off all four New Jersey power plays. The only problem was twice right after the Kings had a big kill. One of those, you know, those kills where you're blocking shots and you're really giving the all out effort. They gave up a goal right after killing two power plays for New Jersey. And that is so frustrating because you've just worked your ass off to kill penalties, which is a very, very, it's probably the hardest thing in hockey to do, frankly, as far as just from an effort standpoint, starting and stopping, starting and stopping, moving, blocking shots, clearing out the front of the net. Killing penalties is just flat out hard work. And when you expend that kind of energy and then you end up giving a goal right after that, it's so deflating. And uh, unfortunately, that happened twice to the Kings. But the penalty kill is improving uh, and it is getting better. And it was great last night, but it was really unfortunate to see them give up those two goals right after really giving great effort to kill a couple of penalties. And again, they killed off all four New Jersey power plays last night. Ho-hum, Phoenix Copley uh, played another solid game. Uh, I didn't think any of the goals he gave up were soft in any way. Um, he did what he has done most of the season, which is give the Kings a chance to win. He deserved a better fate than that overtime loss, I thought. But uh, another solid effort from Phoenix Copley. Uh, for the LA Kings in net. I thought the Dino Fiala Arvidsson line was very dangerous throughout the game. So that move for Todd McClellan out of necessity, I thought ended up uh, looking really good. We'll see if they are together for the rest of the road trip or how that goes. But I thought in particular Fiala and Arvidsson looked really good playing together and had a couple of, of great uh, two-on-one opportunities and scored on one of them. Now, if you've listened or watched the show with any regularity, you probably know I don't complain much about officiating. I think I'm pretty fair about the very difficult and thankless job referees in all sports have to do. That said, there was a late tripping call on Gabe Velarde that I thought was crap. Now, if you didn't see it, Velarde used his skate defensively to deflect a puck, and after he did that, his foot made contact with the foot of a New Jersey player, causing that player to go down, and a tripping penalty was called and maybe that's a letter of the law call but it is definitely not a spirit of the law call Gabe Velarde is allowed to play the puck is allowed to play defense against the puck he didn't stick out his foot to get an advantage over his opponent by tripping him he stuck out his foot to play the puck which he did now what happened after that to me is incidental contact especially in that situation the time of the game late in the third period holding on to a one goal lead now you might say, well, no harm because the Kings killed it off. Yes, but 
I don't I don't think it's unrealistic to say that the Kings had to expend a ton of energy late in the third period to kill off what a penalty that shouldn't have been called. And perhaps maybe that little bit of energy that they could have had otherwise, they didn't have when the game tying goal was scored. And I think you could also argue that, you know, when you're killing penalties, it messes up with the line combinations. Maybe Tom McClellan didn't have the guys out on the ice in the final couple of minutes that he would have preferred to have had. And it all played some sort of a factor in New Jersey tying up the game. How much of a factor? I don't know. Um, but in the end, I do. I believe that that call was just a really bad call. At any point of the game, it's a bad call, in my opinion. And to call it at that point in the game, I really, really agree just on my part, uh, I think. All right, it's time to turn the page because the Kings are right back in action tonight against another team holding down a playoff spot. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, I want to invite you to check out Locked On NHL Prospects. It's your daily podcast covering the next generation of hockey superstars leading up to the NHL draft, plus NHL draft rankings and top prospect comparisons for every team that is Locked On NHL Prospects available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. So a uh, shout out to friend Paul, who uh, texted me to tell me that former Kings defenseman Kevin Graval was placed on waivers today by the Nashville Predators. Now, he's a 30-year-old left-handed defenseman, originally drafted by the Kings in the fifth round back in 2010. You might remember the name. Uh, he played parts of three seasons with the Kings, 70 total games in L.A. He had a goal and nine assists. Uh, he had one assist in 13 games with Nashville this season. So why are you telling me this, Eddie? Uh, you might be asking, well, the Kings know him. Uh, he's a depth left-handed defenseman. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Kings claimed him off waivers uh, and, and bring back a familiar name just for some depth on defense in the organization. We'll keep an eye on that, and we'll tell you on Monday's show if that happens or not. As I mentioned, the Kings are right back in action tonight in New York to face the Islanders with Jonathan Quick expected to be in net, and we will all hold our breath on every halfway decent scoring chance for the Islanders um, who are holding down the number one wildcard spot in the East right now. They've got a record of 30, 24, and 7. They just made a big trade recently to get Bo Horvat from the Vancouver Canucks to help bolster their lineup, and that's given them a little bit of juice of late. Uh, they are coming off a nice 2-1 win over a pretty solid Winnipeg team on Wednesday. So heading into tonight's game, uh, the Kings are still in second place in the Pacific Division, but they trail the Golden Knights now by three points in the division as Vegas got a big 4-3 overtime win over the Flames last night. L.A. has 72 points, the same number of points as the Edmonton Oilers, who took over the second spot in the Pacific last night after they curb-stomped the Pittsburgh Penguins 7-2. Connor McDavid had another crazy game, including scoring on a penalty shot. Um, the Seattle Kraken lost a tough one at home to the Boston Bruins last night, 6-5. That knocked the Kraken down into the fourth spot. In the division right now, they are the number one wildcard team in the West. They're two points back of L.A. So the Kings are the only Pacific Division team in action tonight uh, with a win in regulation or overtime or shootout on Long Island. The Kings would reclaim second place in the division and push the Oilers back down to the third spot. So as we've talked about uh, many, many times on a nightly basis, things are changing in the Pacific Division because things are so close right now. Again, it'll be very interesting to see the trade deadline coming up next Friday. Uh, over the weekend, are we going to have any moves by any of the four teams in the Pacific to try and do something to bolster their lineup? Obviously, if you if you follow things on Twitter, uh, there's all kinds of uh, rumors flying fast and furious. But it is interesting that to date, and you know this is going to change, but so far, all the big moves have been made by the Eastern Conference teams. And the West, so far, it's going to be interesting to see, will there be that one team that makes that big major move to kind of start the dominoes falling? You know, if Vegas goes out and gets Patrick Kane from Chicago, how does that affect what Edmonton does, what LA does, what Seattle does? Maybe it doesn't affect them at all. Maybe it changes plans. But uh, kind of waiting to see which team is going to have that domino fall first. I think it's going to be Vegas. Personally, because I, as I mentioned before, they are a team that's in win now mo now mode. They are their window is closing, not opening in the near future. They've got salary cap issues. They're going for it now. It's kind of been their style as well in Vegas uh, to be aggressive. So we'll see. I think Vegas is going to make some sort of a move here, uh, and uh, we'll see how that affects. Like I said, the rest of the Pacific Division, but it is very very tight. Uh, we'll see what the stats are 
on the other side of the weekend. We'll update you, obviously, coming up uh, on Monday's show. And speaking of Monday's show, obviously, we'll recap what happens tonight with the Kings against the Islanders. And they also have a Sunday afternoon game, L.A. time, uh, against the New York Rangers, another very tough opponent, another playoff team right now, one of the teams in the East that had a lot of expectations coming into the season. We'll talk about that coming up on Monday's show. If you would like to give some feedback uh, on what's going on with the LA Kings or anything else, you can always send me an email uh, at lockedoneddy at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E, lockedoneddy at gmail.com. We will have another feedback show coming up uh, next week and uh, love to get your emails, your comments and all that. If you're watching on YouTube uh, and hopefully this uploads in a timely manner, unlike yesterday, uh, you can make your comments in the comment section below. I always check those and uh, read them. I read all of them and then pick out a few um, to read on our feedback shows next week. Speaking of feedback shows, I do need to let you know, like I said, um, yesterday's YouTube episode, which was our Thursday feedback show did not upload until Friday morning. So if you missed out on the Thursday episode, um, I would encourage you to go back and check that out. So you can have two episodes to watch over the weekend with this one and that one, or on your Friday or whatever. Um, You know, there's nothing too timely that happened on that show that you couldn't get something out of. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about something that's that you already know that has happened, that kind of thing. So uh, if you would go back and check out that Thursday feedback show that got uploaded a little bit later because of some technical issues with with YouTube out of my control. So, hey, we're also on Twitter at Locked on LA Kings. We're on Instagram at Locked on LA Kings. Over the weekend, uh, when we don't have shows, obviously be updating and retweeting anything that goes on involving the trade deadline or anything else involving your Los Angeles Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. As always, thank you so much for listening and watching Locked on LA Kings. Hope you enjoyed uh, all the shows this week. We'll have more for you next week. Have a great weekend. And as always, go Kings go.